What's up? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, we're going to talk about softball players. What if you have really small hands and throwing a softball feels a lot like throwing one of these mini watermelons? So stay tuned. I know this is a common problem in fast pitch, so we're going to address it. Okay, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. I do tons of videos on softball throwing, on fielding, on mindset, strength training, arm care, all that stuff. Check out the links in the description below for more videos, resources, my online courses, and definitely subscribe to the channel because there's lots more videos like this one. So in today's video, I've actually gotten this question twice in the last week, one from a family um, in uh, New Orleans and one from a friend who said, hey, my daughter, she's struggling with throwing. Her hands are really small. We think this is the reason. What's your opinion on that? So let's go through this. This is going to be a little bit more in depth, and I've got this, this watermelon as a prop uh, because I want to explain a couple concepts. So number one, the biggest thing to get out of the way is your daughter is not completely handicapped by having small hands. I've worked with a lot of players that are tiny over the years who got really small hands, and we can still make a lot of progress. They can improve their mechanics, and they can throw plenty well enough to be competitive on the field. Now, as their hands get bigger, they're definitely gonna throw harder, they're definitely gonna feel a lot more comfortable, and their mechanics are gonna improve from there. So the biggest thing to get out of the way is, just because she has small hands, do not blame her lack of throwing competence on her small hands. It's not the only reason, it's part of it, it's definitely a, pr a problem as we'll go into, but it's not something to just dismiss that there's not other stuff that can be fixed that they can't that progress can't be made just because she's got small hands. So you're not going to you're not going to take the attitude of we're going to wait this out though she's bigger. No. You can definitely make a lot of improvements to throwing mechanics when they're young. But the big thing is here. So obviously I was a pro baseball pitcher. I've got big hands and I've got long arms for my height. Um, I'm about 6 foot. But I, I bought this mini watermelon because this is about the right size I think relatively to a girl who's got really tiny hands, you know, 8, 9, 10 years old. So when you compare these two, and um, obviously this is going to stress even my hands out because this thing's pretty big and it's, it's also very slick. Let's talk about what increased size does to your throwing mechanics. So number one, the big thing that we need to talk about is grip. So grip is important. In a perfect world, you have three fingers on the top like that and your thumb on the bottom like so. You want your fingers kind of close together because then they push as a unit rather than having them forked wide now they can kind of like add wonky spin and push around it. Now, it's not ideal to have your thumb on the side of the ball like this because it's going to allow you to more easily put side spin on it and kind of chop around it. It's not going to be as stable in your hand. It's just not going to be as ideal. So we don't want to do this unless we have to. And the big thing to know is that if you have really tiny hands and you can't get your thumb to the bottom of the ball, then you're just going to have to make do. I don't have a hack for you, and this is what I told my friend. I don't have a hack um, and some way to just like cheat around it. If your hands aren't big enough to get your thumb to the bottom of the softball, then they're just not. So in that in that case, you're just going to go with what's most comfortable for you. So it's probably going to be thumb on the side, and then your four fingers are probably going to be spread out evenly on the top. And this middle, this pinky finger, which again in a perfect world would be kind of underneath the ball like this is probably going to end up migrating to the top. It's again, it's it's just going to be about comfort and trying to get these three fingers, which are going to do most most of the work and most of the pushing into a position where they can do that. So I wouldn't spread out all your fingers like this um, into like a pentagon kind of shape. I would still kind of keep those three fingers, you know, as close to the top as you can, even if you've got to have this pinky and this thumb creeping on the side. So that's number one. And so let's look at me real quick here. So um, for me, grabbing this watermelon, this is, I, I, think it's, I think this is about the right size for this demonstration. I could get my thumb on the bottom if I really tried, right? Um, but in a game, if this was actually a softball, like one of those 12-inch softballs that they play with in Chicago, I'm realistically not going to be able to take the time to adjust and put my thumb on the bottom of this, of this. So when I grab this comfortably, I'm doing the same thing that little girls do when they have small hands. My thumb is on the side of the ball and I've got my four fingers on the top. That's about the most comfortable, easy, quick way to do it. Now, as I do this, and this is what really impacts softball throwing mechanics for the negative, is that when you've got really small hands, you don't wanna do this. You don't wanna hold it like this. And even right now, I'm, I'm at risk for dropping this at any moment. Um, and why? Because there's nothing underneath the ball. 
you know, when you can get your thumb comfortably underneath, now you're never really at risk of dropping the ball. And so one of the big things, I'm not gonna go deep into mechanics here, one of the big th things in throwing a softball well with proper mechanics is that there's a heavy pullback component of your throwing of your throwing motion. So your throwing arm is gonna separate down. So if you watch some of my slow motion videos, I'll, I'll link in the description below, you'll see all the best infielders in the world, baseball and softball, who throw really well, they're gonna separate their hands down a little bit. They're not gonna make a big circle, but they're gonna separate down and they're gonna pull their shoulder blade back. That's gonna get this elbow angle where it needs to be, but it's what it's gonna do is, this is the result, is that my palm is facing down. So if I don't have a big hand and I don't have a super firm grip, especially if I move my thumb up here, now this is a big risk for coming and falling out. So what naturally, and this was, you know, humans are smart, we do things even without thinking about it, if I want to alleviate that problem, what would I do? Instead of doing this, I'm going to go boop like that. And now this is not going to fall. It's a lot more stable, but this is not proper throwing mechanics. You do not want to have your arm, your form, a shooting to the top. And again, I have a lot more videos that talk about what the handbrake should do and the timing of it, but you don't want to get the ball and go to the top. If you watch major league baseball players, zero of them do that. And if you watch softball players that throw really hard, zero of them do that too and that's not to say all d1 players do it because there's a lot of d1 players that don't have good throwing mechanics and they might go to the top and throw and still be able to muscle it enough to do the job but again we have to hold to a high standard which is what do good throwing mechanics really look like that's why i use baseball as an example much more than i use softball and we do pull the shoulder blades back and the palm faces down so again the challenge there is that without that thumb on the bottom this ball is pretty insecure so as a young softball player, your inclination is going to be to keep your arm underneath the ball and move on the way up. And this is going to negatively impact your throwing mechanics. I see lots of players that throw that way. They get a ground ball and they immediately go here. It's partly because of coaching, but partly sometimes because of their hand size. So what do we do about this? So if, you, uh, if your daughter struggles with this problem or you struggle with this problem, hopefully you're still watching by this point. There's a really easy solution. So I'll give you a quick anecdote. Uh, a girl I dated about 10 years ago, we play catch once in a while because I would just open up my baseball academy and she threw hard. We got her on the radar gun one day with a softball. She threw like 65 and she only played like one year softball when she was like pretty young, like elementary or middle school maybe. And I'm like, how do you throw that hard? And she said, well, I grew up on a farm and I just played catch with my dad all the time with the baseball. Like we just played baseball. And when I, you know, when I signed up for softball, I didn't really like softball, so I quit. So she grew up throwing baseballs, which this thing is tiny in my hand, especially after holding that watermelon. But the big thing with throwing baseballs is they're small. So for a little girl who wants to learn how to throw, putting a baseball in her hand, putting a tennis ball in her hand, putting even a wiffle ball in her hand, those are really positive teaching tools for developing throwing skills. And this is the big, the big takeaway that I want you to get from this video. I don't want you, and, this, and, and parents get really stuck on throwing a softball. I, I want her to be good throwing a softball, so I don't want her throwing other things. I want to make sure she's focusing on her time throwing a softball. That's the wrong thing to do. And again, my ex-girlfriend from a decade ago was a great example of that. She didn't throw a softball, but she could throw a softball. And you're like, well, why would this transfer over to throwing a softball? Well, because it's a throwing skill. So again, for me as an old pro baseball pitcher, you know, I could throw in the 90s. I can throw any object, right? I could go outside and chuck this pretty darn far with pretty decent mechanics. It weighs probably five pounds. Um, but if you give me a, a 12 inch softball that's you know ginormous, I can still throw it really, really well from all different arm angles and do the job. That's because I'm a good thrower. So good throwers can throw anything. So if you help your daughter become a good thrower, not a good softball thrower, but a good soft, but a good thrower first, then those skills are gonna transfer to softball, just like my ex-girlfriend did so long ago. She threw a baseball on the farm with her dad. That was what they did. And guess what? She could throw the crap out of a softball too. She could throw the crap out of anything else because she was a good thrower. So what I would encourage you to do is do the best you can with the grip, but spend a lot of your time while she's young putting a baseball in her hand. Go play catch with a baseball. Throw ground balls with a baseball. Go to the uh, tennis court. Take this tennis ball and have her chuck it against the wall, work on her fielding, and she can throw at all different arm angles and throw the tennis ball. It's light and it's small. It's a great practice tool. Throw wiffle balls sometimes. They're really light. It's just part of like being a kid, right? How often do softball players throw wiffle balls? Baseball players throw them all the time because they like playing wiffle ball when they're growing up. So don't get fixated on 
on throwing the full regulation size softball. It's a it's a problem. Be fixated on developing good throwing skills in general, and that means smaller objects that are going to help build her mechanics because she can do all these throwing mechanic techniques that I talked about without issue with a baseball in her hand or without issue with a tennis ball in her hand or with the smaller, you know, the, the is it the 10 inch softball? With the smaller 10 inch softball, which they use for like what, uh, 10 U and under? That's, that's pretty much it, 10 U. So really, in my opinion, they should use that ball a lot longer than they do. But, you know, use the smaller balls that you have available to you and develop good throwing skills. And I absolutely promise you, they will transfer to good softball throwing skills, okay? So if you have a question, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. Share with a friend who needs it because I know this is a common question. Like I said, I got it twice in the past week. So, you know, share with a friend and I'll see you here in the next softball video.